Let's find out where things stand tonight. Correspondent David Spunt is at the Justice Department. Good evening, David. Brett, good evening to you. Right now, the highest levels of the FBI and Justice Department are personally involved to make sure that these criminals who raided the Capitol are brought to justice. We want to show you a few pictures some people of interest authorities want to talk to. They want to hear from this man identified as Jake Angeli. I'm told he's a QAnon conspiracy theorist who lives in Arizona. Angeli broke into the Senate chamber at one point, sat in the dais chair where Vice President Mike Pence sat just minutes before. Then, Brett, there's Richard Barnett, a Trump supporter from Arkansas who had a personal vendetta against House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, so much so he broke into her office and left this message. It said, quote, we will not back down. Authorities are asking for help to identify dozens of these people. The Capitol is equipped, as you mentioned, with that facial recognition technology. I'm told names are already being matched with faces. There was another man hanging from the uh, House chamber, and he said that he just got caught up in the moment. Now, 35-year-old Ashley Babbitt from San Diego lost her life in the Capitol siege. She broke through barriers and illegally entered the Capitol, where investigators say she was shot by a Capitol police officer. She was an Air Force veteran. That officer is now on leave pending an internal investigation. Three other people, Brett, died from medical emergencies outside in the chaos. To add on top of that, authorities found two pipe bombs, one outside the Democratic and one outside the Republican National Committee headquarters. Police also found a cooler with a Molotov cocktail. One man was arrested with a military rifle and 11 Molotov cocktails. FBI Director Christopher Wray saying in part in a statement released today, such behavior betrays the values of our democracy. Make no mistake with our partners, we will hold accountable those who participated in yesterday's siege of the Capitol. Now back here at the Justice Department, authorities announced 55 different federal charges plus those 75 arrests. A couple names just just released within the last hour or so. I want to read it. Christopher Alberts and Mark Leffingwell. Insurrection and sedition charges are possible for them and more people. And Brett, to top it off, there's this executive order from President Trump last June of 2020 talking about 10 years for anybody that destroys federal property or monuments. He has not commented on this executive order and the power it holds since the siege of the Capitol yesterday. Brett. You know, David, there's been a lot of speculation online and elsewhere about Antifa and people tied to Antifa somehow infiltrating this group. Is the federal authorities saying anything about that? Yeah, that, Brett, that was something floated uh, heavily by Matt Gates, the congressman from Florida, that Antifa was indeed behind this. My law enforcement sources are telling me it's possible there may be one or two people that has a loose tie to Antifa. They're investigating that, but the majority of the people that stormed the Capitol, they say were not related to Antifa from everything they can tell, and they're saying that theory is debunked as of now, and the investigation continues. Okay, David Spahn, thank you.